intense. Now, <laughs> what would you say are some of the things that you learned living here? In Nashville, probably the biggest thing that I've learned is to never have expectations <laughs> with with especially in this town Nashville's a fickle bitch man I can't even tell you how many times it's like chew you up until not even yeah it's just you you right about to quit like right as you're about to quit you're just like god damn I can't take anymore you know it's you know it just it, and then something happens and then, then she'll throw you a bone mm -hmm. but not having expectations helps because I think a lot of people they come down here they take a look around and they're like where's my record deal <laughs> Exactly. It's like, what fucking record They're idiots you know? and they never last. I think everyone has to get over th that phase in the beginning, like, oh, I think I'm just gonna come here and make it happen. And then they play their first three, like, totally shit shows, yeah, right. and, like, no one's there, and they're like, oh, wait a second, I need to learn how to do this. And people are like, you gotta work on this, this, and this. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, and then you have to right. face that mountain. You're like, oh my god, I yeah. have so much to learn. Yeah. And then you like kind of go through that whole thing, and it, then you feel confident enough after you come out the other side to like play and perform and yeah, exactly around here. I I I was a performer. Like I was the weekends every weekend I had a gig when I was in Pennsylvania. And then when I moved here, I was like I was 19, then I turned 20, and it was like there was a couldn't go anywhere. I had a fake ID, but it got taken, you know, after like a certain point in time. <laughs> so like, I was pretty much, con all I could do was hang out with people in like a, a social setting. Not um, a bar. That wasn't a bar or record music. So I spent most of my time just recording and jamming and it wasn't a priority for me to ever go out. And I kind of got in that habit. Whereas, you know, I wish I wanted to go out a little bit more sometimes. But just the, the, the way the way that Nashville works is like, like, like Gabby was saying, it's, you, you go somewhere and you never know who you're, you're gonna meet. Like I've never had a dull moment or a dull conversation and pretty much my, my pe people I loved for the, re for the rest of my life, some of my closest friends I met within the last, you know, five years of living here. You can't say you've never had a dull conversation. Uh, yeah, I thought, but yeah, but I mean, still, it's, it's interesting. And it's, it's funny how small it becomes full. after a second. Absolutely. No, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, you always take away something from learn, you know, learn someone, man. I've learned so much. So I'm just thinking there. about the Whole Foods and Green Hills. I've had some dull conversations. What the fuck are you going over there to get food for? Are you going to Whole Foods? Or are you going over there to have conversations for? I exactly. get, hey, listen, yeah. I get, I do get one certain kind of vitamin there. I go to the grocery oh, store, I buy my cookie dough, and I get the fuck out. That's it, dude. But yeah, I haven't a, gone there in over a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to get in, get out. I don't blame you, dude. I mean, no. I like to wander. Oh, you like to wander? But, in the grocery know, store. Yeah. Like, I like to stare at things for a while and then make purchases. <laughs> Unless if I go there high, I'm just like... I put in my I if I have headphones in, I'm like, there's a line, shit, yeah. <laughs> keep looking <laughs> come back there's still a lot I'll keep staring yes exactly I'm entertained <laughs> this is a video game it kind of is it feels like it especially when you have your music like yeah it is you have your music you're just kind of in your like, little world I'm just like would I want this nutrients <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> contemplating the food and then you see the live lobsters and they're kind of like and you look at other scratching people's. at the, the glass and they got those rubber bands on their claws <laughs> I just want to grab them all out. Yeah, but you put can't them in the because it's Tennessee, dude. You can't put them in a parking lot. It's Tennessee. Like. What if I just buy them all and put them in the river? They would probably die because they're salt water. God damn it. Yeah. Where is some salt water around here? I can't have a pet lobster. I can't you, even have a pet you need fish. To just build a moat in your backyard around your house. Should we just have pet lobsters? And then just have pet lobsters. <laughs> lobsters. Just protecting. Dude. Protecting. <laughs> Whoa. Like I you, am not too high for this. If idea, you though. fall in the moat, then the pet lobster is. <laughs> and yeah, every once in a while we gotta we gotta feed them something. You know? Or every once in a while we gotta be fed. Yeah. Okay, who's who's drawing straws today? Y'all just have a party and you're like that guy's a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, there's a couple people I would like to push in that boat by now and then been through my doors. I'll say, but <laughs> yeah, he looks like he could be thrown in the moat. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm not. I don't, I'm not even kidding. I like your idea. Yeah, I kind of like that, dude. I'm a, yeah. Lobster Kingdom. I'm about that. That's cool. Dun, dun, dun. But they're then you not. Have a draw bridge. Their <sighs> claws or their whatever's aren't strong enough to do anything like really? detrimental. No, no. Yeah, no. certainly but not. The fear of it would be scary. Do they Imagine if there were uh, lots of them, attention? like throngs of lobsters. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you don't want to be thrown in that, and people. Are like, oh. 
But then you have like then, also strobe lights yeah. going, or like at least spotlights to oh my show God, you what's in there. Oh my God, that would be terrifying. Lobster disco. <laughs> just like, Lobster disco. It would just look like they're like <laughs> snapping at <laughs> high speeds. Just a strobe light, dude. I just like to... No. <laughs> strobe light on the lobsters. Yeah. <laughs> That's some good dude, shit. Dude, I'm, I'm actually kind of into it. I'll help you build... I'll help you dig it. A moat? Do we have to talk to our landlord? No, we never talk Fuck to them. Fuck them, dude. I'm we do whatever we want. I, I'm gonna dig a hole in my backyard with you like that. <laughs> we just build a trench. Take a trench. Fill it with pebbles and concrete. And, and then put a little... Yeah. yeah, what the hell they say? The worst you can see. They eat like raw chicken and so shit, right? They're like crabs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get crab and you throw raw piece of raw chicken down the, them in there and be like, it's an observatory, you know. All the lobsters at Publix the other night, they all look tell, so sad. Just tell them you're a biology major. I'm, I'm studying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maybe studying. I'll just tell them I'm hosting a big dinner party. Yeah, I don't know if I covered if I learned anything in Nashville or not, but... I think it's enough. It's taught me everything no, right I, now. Yeah, no, I think we covered that. I, Let's say it's your first six months moving here. No. Game plan. Mm-hmm. What is your first six month game plan? I'll, this can be both of y'all. <laughs> Get a job. Well, <laughs> yeah. Get a job or yeah. have lots of money saved up because it's an expensive city. <laughs> but you should probably have a job. Just we don't saying. have a job too long. No, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. But no, our no. roommate, if, it, if we didn't have our roommate, we'd probably kill each other. We, we both be dead now so yeah my first six months were very hungry i was paying 9.50 a month <laughs> at an apartment so what i would tell people is like don't go find a room in a house maybe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, my biggest struggle was i i didn't know what to do in the city not being 21. i struggled with that until i turned 21 and there's plenty of shows that are 18 and up i tried a lot of stuff like, you know, going hang it like I would just I would go like, try and hang out around Belmont and stuff, trying to find people my own age and that never really seemed to work. Because I wasn't in like the Belmont club, you know. It just wasn't. Like they they they, they just they, they excluded me. <laughs> I tried so hard to be friends with people over there. But I would say maybe, you know, just be just just focus on your thing and get to know yourself because it's a long ride and if you can figure out how to be comfortable it took me a long time to get comfortable. If I'd have just had somebody say, Hey man, just get comfortable, maybe that would have made things easier. Just, just get comfortable with it because it's, it's a long ride. Like, maybe get used to, you know, being uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or being hungry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's hungry. very good. And the beginning, you're just like so close. Like, what should I do? This? Should I do that? They're doing this. They're doing that. You're, you're trying to find your place here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like eventually Nashville will just like find you a place. Like you like. I don't feel like I found a place yet. To be honest yeah. with you, I just got used to it, man. Yeah. 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 Like, there's a lot of different niche things that you just like. It's a forever adapting thing. Yeah. It is, and I think I mean my only piece of advice would be everybody you're gonna meet will be valuable in some way, but the people that you choose to spend most of your time with and you want to, you know, make something with them, like a band or whatever, a project, just make sure that they're also, you know, on the same wavelength. Passionate. Exactly. There's gonna be a lot of people that you love to hang out with, but maybe you don't want to build something with them. So, Um. and then also watch out for people that think that's what they want to do but in reality they're more like i like the idea of doing it i just don't like the process of getting there or xyz that goes into it because a lot of people move here they think oh it's all just gonna be great we're gonna go play a show lots of people will be there no not all the time most of the time i mean at least with us like our first show how many people were there like five four yeah a couple shows we played in nashville our first show at the basement nobody we just had some mike grimes and And the other band yeah that's it Nobody was fucking there. It was a snowstorm. Your transmission blew that night or something. Yeah, we drove there in second gear. <laughs> what year was that? I don't know. 2018. Yeah. Maybe 2019. Yeah, it was like that winter. No, it was 2018. Okay. Oh, you're right. My, I don't know. Anyway, point is, man, if you're going to come here and just expect it all to happen, you will be sorely mistaken and don't even bother if you think it's just going to be an easy, like, okay, within a few months. I'm good. Yeah, some people are lucky like that, but I mean, you know, it's it's not nothing's worth having unless you have to work really, really. And that's really the hard. fun of it. It's about yeah. the experience. Exactly. About How the boring process. would it be if you just came here and everything worked out right away? It like, if it came fast, no. you would not have any appreciation no. for any. Life is always about the small things. That's like everything is small. So it's like if you have a bunch of success and small things, 
life is great, but if you only focus on Big thing. like the something in the, in the future, I've got to reach this. You'll mm -hmm. never appreciate the now. No, but no, none of that shit means anything. Cause so like, well, what what is accomplishment? Like, however you're gonna try and measure it, that's that's the, you know, you, you're just not gonna get anywhere with that. It's all about embracing the process to whatever you do in life, because like you know, if if you get the thing, then you've already got the thing. You you probably on to the next thing at that point. But if you are more in love with the process than achieving something you know that's that 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 that's pure you know that's pure beauty really that's kind of what would have made, i would i would kind of redact what i was saying about like just what i learned moving to nashville in a sense i would say that if i could tell myself something you know five six years ago embrace the process in every single thing that you do and stop trying to please people because that doesn't mean shit. If it's if it's genuine, it's just gonna feel right, and you're not gonna have a thing to complain about. And people will sense that and know that and appreciate that. Yeah, just be real. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> it's like, for instance, if someone's like, "Well, I want this really big house for like that's my dream." Well, you're probably gonna achieve that, and you're probably gonna get the big house. But then what? But then what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have a dream that maybe you'll never achieve, but you work towards, it's like your whole life, your whole life, yeah, exactly. You're growing. That's yeah. the musical journey. That's is, why, I like, like growth, physical things or whatever, it will never, you know, what you get or what you can get from a job or whatever. It's like what you become from doing the job. Yeah, I, I know. I know exactly what you're talking well, about. It's just like. Anybody that's truly successful or aware of their abilities or whatever could have some extreme misfortune happen and then the next day or the next several months know how to get it all back because they have the intelligence and the knowledge of how to get it. It doesn't matter if they lose it. They can, they can create, they have enough ways to get it back. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, 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 it totally does, man. I think that's confidence. You think that's confidence? Wow, that's a really cool way to put it. Everything and then being able to get it back and it not be a problem. Mm -hmm. Or losing everything and it's still just not being a problem. Yeah. No. Because, you, you, I mean, that, that, that's you the thing. You have something else. I've lost, yeah. I've lost. I've, I, you yeah. know, we, we have our wins and we have our losses. Like, you know, all of us are like, mm. there's like extraordinarily a... privileged just to be sitting at this table right definitely. now. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. just, I'm going to focus on, on gratitude, bro. Yes, mm -hmm. gratitude. We're Thank very, very lucky. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, like, like if, if you run into people, you know, that, 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 that have nothing, you realize um, that it's not having things. It is what it takes to be happy it's it's about you know it's about community it's just about choosing to be positive it's um it's it's not about you know how many how many dollars you got in the bank or oh. all that other shit you know some people are just born with that too but like sometimes you gotta go through just some bullshit just to like understand just to knock your ego down just to Definitely. just to kick you in the nuts you're like okay i get it i swear to god i get it god. you know but <laughs> you gotta pray that you fucking learn that's what's happening some oh, people yeah. will play the pity party forever mm. and then mm -hmm. you can't they you can't help them they can't help themselves and god forbid you hang around them because they'll drag you down yeah that's what, I think that's what they mean when they say, oh, that's a toxic person or something like that. It's, mm -hmm. Yes, the energy vampire. Because they're not willing to grow, you know what I mean? And it's like... And if you are... That's where you I get are, my energy. You're a threat to their, their themselves. Either that or they're going to grab on you and they're just going to... You have to carry them up the fucking mountain. Dry. You know? Fucking bleed you until you're dry. Yeah. Then you have to realize it and be like, oh, well, time you're for you to go. You're not my fucking friend. And then you're like, you're going to trim the fat. <laughs> Yeah, so to say. Yeah, well, I don't know. I feel so like I'm, yeah. I'm learning how to Dude, eat the fat on the steak lately, so man. True, I'm though. just learning how to eat it. I don't trim it anymore. Just eat it. Just like, <laughs> yeah, like I, I want to say that my, 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 my spirit, like, just I turn can, it to fuel. Yeah, I can turn that shit into fuel now, dude. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just, you, know, you you run around people like that, man. And it's just like okay, well, I mean, I still just gained something. Like you I do. learned something from this experience. Or what you don't want to, you know, embody or try to like give off. So, summing up everything that you've said before, what would you say is a quick summary of the advice direct someone moving to Nashville wants to pursue art, wants to do their thing? What are like embrace the process. Don't succumb to bullshit 
because you're just gonna waste time. Bullshit, as in just you know, just people be like the naysayers. Oh, bullshit, yeah. people. Yeah, naysayers. Wasters of time. Naysayers. You know, waste your time if you you know if you whoever <laughs> negative people. Negative yes. people. Yeah. Yes. Just don't do it. People that have no ambition. Yes. Yeah, ambition. I think that that's that's really or all work I mean ethic. by that. Yeah. <laughs> or reason to live. Yeah. Well, sometimes you gotta embrace those people, give them as much help as they need. Definitely. Yeah, but um, inspire them. That's what it is. If you want to show someone, you gotta do it yourself. You know? Yeah, and if you're here, I'd say if you're here in Nashville for music, just trust music and love music as much as you can love something, and that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. If that's why you're here, you will find everything that you need. Awesome. The tenants. I agree. And I would only thing I would add to that is when you get to town, don't be afraid to pull away and just work on stuff and not be as social. Because if you move to town and you're feeling creative, you should work on shit, record it and put it out. And then you have something to show. Something that you made in town that you actually spent time on. And then the people that you want to meet might come after that. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> that was legendary, dude. It was like a flash. <laughs> Wow, those pectorals. I just lost a button. Pectorals. Yeah, it went fl Jesus. The button went flying. Jesus. It was like Haley's Comet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Haley's Comet? Yeah, once every 2,000 years, about? a button will do that. <laughs> oh my I'm high. I'm stretch. Well, you needed to stretch. That button had to come off, man. Jeez, I guess it just <laughs> had to come off. Anyways, now we're jumping in to bend. Questions. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. I feel like I've got, we've all gotten a great vibe, both of y'all. Is there anything else that y'all would want to throw in about yourselves that I might have not asked or that you'd like to add? Only two things matter in Nashville. The last thing is, is <laughs> can you play? If you're know, a musician, can you play? Can you hang? And can you hang? If you could hang and you can play, that's it. That's all you need. That's all you need. Awesome. I concur with that. Yeah. Play and hang. Awesome. Mm. Alright. Mm. I'm well, doing neither right now. But. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, weird sisters. Yeah. How did y'all start? I have no idea. You can do this one. Alright. The abridged version. So, I, I moved over to the, the, the house where we met, and I was pretty close to her. I bought a Fender Rhodes for $900, and I didn't eat for a week. I was just listening to that song. What year was this? Two thousand and sixteen. I bought yeah, I bought the I bought a Fender Rhodes for my boss. And the first thing I did was go over to Blair School of Music and Where I was. Yeah, where she was hanging out, being a, learning how to be doctor professor, this and that. And <laughs> we go into her professor's office and like he's got this beautiful grand piano and I I pull out the Fender Rhodes guitar amp and first time she'd ever played a instrument the keyed instrument that wasn't a piano. And Pretty soon, subsequently, she would be coming over to my house every single day. And I would just play the drums, and she would play the Fender Rhodes. And pretty soon, I got a synthesizer, a Moog, and she was started doing the left hands on the, uh, you know, she started just playing both at the same time. And, you know, before too long, it was like, well, we should, should we going to get a bass player, you know, or should we going to start a band, or this and that? And the answer was no. Gabby could do it all because she's <laughs> well, she's that's Gabby. That's an overstatement, bro. She's that's bullshit. She's been our bass player, you know, the entire time. She's been the Rayman Zarek. Exactly. Yeah, bro. But I'm passing my baton. Definitely. Or you're creating your own baton. So. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I mean, you know, it's been fun for sure. But yeah, we're looking for a bass player. We're now. looking for a bass player. Oh, uh, okay. Right yeah. The change, word is out. Change that left hand if we get over into the right well, side. Well, I want to play like, so I, wanna, I still want to play two keyboards at once. I'm not trying to, you know, lower the game here. I'm trying to oh, diversify. Yeah. So like, say the left hand on the synthesizer, but maybe it's playing like a sick fucking riff. And the right hand's on the clavinet, just doing something crazy. And then I'm like using the phaser and wah wah. All the while the bass player's holding it down. Exactly, so not playing to, like, too much. Please don't play too much if you want to play. You're able to dance with, over a little bit. Yeah, just create space and dance. And then floor. a saxophone with a wireless microphone. So I'll be out there just with a delay, delay pedal. Oh yeah, oh, saxophone with delay pedal is cool. I can't yeah, wait. Try it sometime. I'm so excited. Oh, I want to do it all right now. <laughs> okay, so 2016, she was coming over to your house. To and jamming. Jamming. And then we became the band, and then here we are. Yeah, well. And it was just both y'all. Yeah. 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 And we got Jeff involved, and then we were, you know, we started. We were starting a gig, and we were three piece for 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 quite a bit of time, man. 
and two and a half years. Experimented with a couple singers and. All right. Where has been y'all's favorite place to play? House shows can be. I mean, house shows are. House shows are awesome. Fun. Yeah. Favorite place to play. Matchbox might be my favorite in Clarksville. Have you, uh, have you been? No, not sure. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. Yeah. I haven't been. That's just that's just a vibe. It's amazing. We've had some amazing shows at the East Room, the High Watt. Uh, yeah, like all Cobra. Of the, all of the five spot. Yeah, Cobra. Five spot. All of, all of, I haven't actually had a bad experience five in spot. town anywhere. Like, well, the Tin Dog Tavern was questionable. <laughs> but the Tin Dog Tavern is no more. In fact, the day that we had the show at the Tin Dog Tavern. Wait, someone stole a PA? Some, no, someone stole a speaker in the PA. So we did not have a PA speaker we had on one my monitor. side of the stage, if you can even call it a stage. There was no monitor. It was just no. one, it was just but, one monitor was the only was speaker. It was fucking awesome. And we fucking rocked our asses off, like, without being able to hear anything. And the cars were just whizzing by. And, like, that crusty dude who promised us free beer didn't give us free beer or any money. And we're just, like, paying for our like PBRs at the bar is kind of like fuck Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> now he's closed. Declined. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's just some, oh, yeah, and then she's carrying her um, amp back to the and car. And I dislocated me. I'm like, what? But we were laughing the whole time <laughs> about the whole thing because I mean, that's if that's our worst show, you know. And we got drunk, and it was so much fun. I mean, you know, in you go in, you go into a venue around here. Every sound guy knows what he's doing. You know, if yeah, well, well most as long should, as they're not jaded. Well, as oh. long as they can hear. <laughs> there, I've known some jaded sound guys, but I like the jaded sound guys. The guy over yeah. at the end is is like kind of jaded, but he's like in the best possible way. Yeah, like all, I love the end. The end's one of my favorite rooms. I wish we could have played there like more recently than we did. What's your next question? What are some band influences? <laughs> the oh, band influences. The doors. Yeah. For me, Isaac Hayes. Mm -hmm. Roy Ayers mm -hmm. be a huge one. Just stuff we all share that we just are crazy about. Funkadelic. Yeah, absolutely. Ze Zeppelin is so special for us. I mean, we still get down and listen to Zeppelin albums a couple times a week. Devin the Dude. Yeah, Devin the Dude. So that's become a... I told you the show Saturday. Devin the Dude, He might yeah. come with us on Saturday. Oh, dude, that'd be so crazy. We could have fun. <laughs> We're gonna oh, yeah. be yeah. Shit's gonna be lit. We're gonna fuck yeah. up. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. Devin the Dude, okay, cool. Yeah. Because yeah, we saw we saw P-Funk together twice. Mm -hmm. That was a big, that was big for us. Sheila E opened for one of them, that was really? cool. P-Funk. We saw we saw Snoop Dogg on the bridge. Like George Clinton. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. Led Zeppelin and. Fuck yeah, man. Pink Who, Floyd. Fuck yeah. Oh. oh my god. We listen to so much Pink Floyd. Did we say Black Sabbath. Oh yeah, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. Tyler the Creator too. Oh yeah. He's cool. What about like James Brown? No. <gasps> Who sings White Rabbit? Oh, Jefferson Airplane. Airplane. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know people always ask us that but i mean i don't i don't i've never been like well, what, like i don't know i like them i just don't know if i hear it i've, I've listened to soloristic so, 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 pillow soloristic pillow probably not king crimson king crimson oh. yeah i love king crimson lark's that tongue and ass oh okay they're, they're coming here I, this year yeah robert fripp's coming what? yeah robert. and i, I want to get a ticket so i don't have any money be, but i'm getting a ticket somehow it's gonna be fucking uh, it's gonna be soon because bill bruford doesn't play for him anymore oh. you just robert fripp you know I mean? no drums oh drums oh, oh okay yeah. it's gavin harrison from porcupine tree that plays with them now really yeah. Oh shit, man. Well, you're way oh, deeper oh. than me, bro. I just know how to fuck with it. I fuck well, really hard. Well, I, I, I really like Discipline and I like Beat. Yeah. Have you listen to those albums? No. Mm -mm. We'll listen to them a little later. Cool. Around, around the fire. <laughs> it's talk all this talk of this fire. Dude, Where it's fun. King Crimson <laughs> albums have been hard to find because it was They're so expensive long on vinyl before. Too. Yeah, it was long before they had them on Spotify. It's so and funny because like at one point, Tool was tour with King Crimson. And Maynard was like, well, this sh this sucks because everyone now knows who we're trying to rip off. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking yeah. awesome. And then they had Bill Hicks open for him. No shit. They were like one of the first bands to ever like a comedian open for a, a band. We've been wanting to do something yeah. like that. We get on tour. We'd love we to have a We kind of did comic. a little bit. One time. One show. <laughs> we had What's His Name open for us. I can't Matt Taylor. Matt Taylor. How do y'all get inspired or what inspires y'all? Like, what do y'all do to get... Go to the graveyard. Just wake up in the morning and start thinking about something and then feel like playing and smoking a little weed and then before you know it, you're making a thing. 
But yeah, well, it's almost like there's, yeah, like you said, just waking up in the morning. I don't, waking up in the morning. Because there's always a project that we're working on. Like right now, we got 20 projects we're working on. You asked me a year ago, we had 20 projects we're working on. It's just all happening. But now it's all about finishing them. It's always been about finishing them. It's just but things finish at different points. we never could before. No, we've been much. finishing stuff forever. You know what I'm saying. It's, it's like right now, like the, the big thing is like we're wrapping up a bunch of recording projects. So, you know, the, the last like six months have just been all about recording. Is like just as is, is intense as you want to interpret that. That's kind of what we're we're doing right now. We recorded vocals last night until like probably 2.33 in the morning, you know? You know, the night before that, probably the same thing, you know, different instruments. <laughs> like, Are there any particular artists other than bands that you name, like... Are you like, I love this person's fucking workout? Zappa. Zappa. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I, I love Vinny Cayuta. What about Bazio? Are you fuck with him? Yeah. Yeah. What about Chester Thompson? Was he from the uh, the one with the other band with like George Duke and shit? Or was that Jim Gordon? Jim Gordon would have been earlier, I feel like. 80s yeah. or earlier than that. Well, Chester Thompson was probably 80s, 90s. Oh, okay. I'm more familiar with, honestly, like 70s Zappa. 70s Zappa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean that's I know I know a lot of records. I'm just saying like the actual lineup. You know what I mean? Like I know I know I know most of them. Like what album are you talking? Joe's Garage. Oh okay. That's Benny Calhoun. That's the one I'm most familiar with. Yeah, it's a great right. Well, it yeah, was like parts one, two, and three or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I have part two like on vinyl, but that's like the you know one one of the few Zappa albums I've been able to find. But that, but his work ethic that you would say someone you inspires yeah. you. Oh yeah, every day, man. Frank, Frank Zappa's work ethic, I think, is unquestionably probably the best in music. I mean, he was able to put out a hundred studio albums before he died. Right, prostate cancer. Yeah, and and it's it's a very short amount of time. Like you know, it's not always about you know quantity, but the the quality of his music, the, the um, seriousness, the, the seriousness, the critical uh, scrutiny, <laughs> the central scrutiny. <laughs> Central scrutinizer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's kind of un unquestioning. Like his his own form of madness was. Um, it's something I like. I, I personally wish I could be twenty four hours a day working. I wish I could wake up and rec record until I dropped over unconscious, or mm -hmm. you know, play until I'm dropped over unconscious. Like I, I have that like mental defect, whatever that is, where I just want to go and go and go and go until I you know my my body like forces me to stop. Like. Right? Well, I'm sure that, I mean, that's an art in itself, and you've got a long time to figure that out, so. <laughs> it's, 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 really, it's basically <laughs> chill, chiseling that down to, like, how to be more efficient with yourself. Yeah, it's all about efficiency. Like, for me now, like, sitting down practicing something for 30 minutes, not that big of a deal. Like, that's not that long of a period of time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you first start out, you're like, God, this takes forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. kind of find a flow after a while of where the, it's, it, you, it starts challenging you, but not enough to make it to where you just feel completely lost. Yeah, I search for that sometimes. I like being lost. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If you start reading music and practicing it, that, it's like, I would never play this. Yeah. You know I mean? Then it makes you play it. And then when you, from learning that phrase, you learn like 10 million things. It's like one phrase. <laughs> You learn it so well. It opens up ten other doors. You can flip it upside down. You can play it backwards. You can play, you know, half time, quarter time, different time signature. I mean, <laughs> I wish I could read music, man. You're kind of making me feel feel a little guilt about not having. You asked me one. to teach you. I should. Yeah. No, no, because that's just such a like just how you just describe it. It was just like why not like even just the mechanics of learning something. I'm backwards. just a very visual learner, so I I like to read too. I like too. to see it. And I can. Mm -hmm. I learn a lot by seeing things. Yeah. I, I, I hear. I, You're I, an auditory learner. Yeah, yeah some people sure. are auditory learners. Like audio books You've been, you've been amazing like, ear too. I mean, I still listen to a lot of audio books and listen to music, but like seeing like if it's written or whatever I, just, I feel like it sings into my brain more yeah i know yeah, i can't even i can't barely read dude like, like some people think in <laughs> words and some people think in pictures so lost in the chronic is their latest release single yeah yep we recorded the old. the sequencer and the drum set and the, like some of the most most of the vocals at the house and we had like an arrangement and we hit up our buddy vance and we said hey man you got any thoughts about this like you you want to try and mix it you think we need to 
do a little more with it. Like, because we were kind of just like, you know, it was a short little song. It was really groovy and he was real interested in it. So we just went up to his place and added a little bit more, did some guitar solos, more synthesizer stuff. and Fun synthesizer stuff. Fun synthesizer stuff. Put our heads together and With everything. guitar and pedals. I never did that before. Loved how it sounded. Yeah, um, Moog through a Loved wah it. pedal. I was on the and wah. And he was doing it and I was playing just, you know, the thing and he was like, control <laughs> the pedals. It sounded so cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, we had a really good time making the track. I loved it. So much fun the most with. fun I had that like ever in one day in a lot of ways. But do you have videos of that? Um, there's one I think on our Instagram, and then we have like some more that I think we'll probably post them eventually. Yeah, yeah, we we, we got we kind of compiled all the footage from the whole day because mm -hmm. that's what our other thing, man. We're making videos like of, yeah. of a lot of stuff that we do, so we don't often, you know. We're not often current with like the videos that we put out like on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. But I just we're stockpiling them right now. Yeah. I love the fucking uh, lobster smoke and then hanging out and and fucking that weird Barbie ashtray Dude, thing. I love the Barbie. <laughs> the Barbie <laughs> ashtray. The it's like Han Solo naked Barbie. I didn't know it was like an ashtray, but I was just like, oh yeah, fucking lobster, go. <laughs> Think about the lobster moat. We're circling back. The lobster moat. Yeah, I know. They were crawfish. Our roommate came home with a bag of crawfish. Oh really? Yeah, we just started so, talking like, about this. You really? That's they're not. Those aren't like fake. No, they're crawfish. No, they're real. No, they're they're real. dead lobsters. Yeah, yeah. No, he came home. He was like, "Oh, crawfish ball, first one of the year." Dude, and like, <laughs> fucking great. Yeah, I just started playing with them in the basement. We had a really good time. Like, I wasn't there. Oh well, you weren't. You were by yourself. Okay, well. And okay. he sent me all these videos. I was like. Oh my god, this is awesome. They're probably like, you know, 40 more, man. I just kept I just kept playing with them for like two hours. It's like, what else can I make the crawfish You're do? Laughing your ass. So like, you know, I could have been ready it's to eat. It's kind of morbid a little. They were like a little old bay. No, it's okay. I, mean, it's, I thought they were like fake rubber. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know. For some reason, I thought they were just like. No, bro, if you look at them up close, they probably look ate, pretty like, real. I ate most, too. Yeah, because I ran up to the bag and just grabbed a handful and just brought them down to the basement. I'm just like. No, that was hilarious. Oh, man, man, I felt we should have gone on a green screen. Wait, uh, that's easy to remedy. Let's just go get some sometime. We recorded the song. We recorded the song, yes. Okay, it was at our house, and then it was at Vance's studio. Yeah, it was Sputnik, and um... And then we finished it, and then our buddy, the real Tom, he's amazing, amazing video filmmaker. Yeah. What's Analog his name? Analog film. Real Tom. The real Tom. His website is therealtom.net. Go in there for an immersive, unforgettable experience. Mm -hmm. That's all we can say about That's Tom. That's all we can say about Tom. His website says it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We and made the video with him. It's coming out, I don't know when. I can't remember. It's like Fourth this. of July. No, I thought it was going to be the third. It's the 3rd or 4th of July that is coming out. We haven't scheduled it yet, but that's when it's coming out. And Tom made it, and it's awesome. I think it's cool. We made this weird, like, spaceship out of... I mean, you gotta tell him how. I, I can't. Okay. Just explain it real quick. Okay, real quick. Real quick. Two hours later. No, real quick. Yeah, basically... <laughs> We made, a, her and Tom came up with a video idea. <laughs> Tom works exclusively in VHS with a lot of uh, analog equipment. And, you know, we've kind of gone on that trip too. We have a lot of, um, you know, equipment in our basement where we're able to do everything completely analog. So everything we record just goes to a, you know, VHS tape, we transfer it, and then, you know, not all of our stuff is like that, but we're having a lot of fun working in that medium. It's like recording on tape. And, you know, the way you can record on tape is that you can multi-track, right? So if you think about video in that sense, by working with green screens, you're able to multi-track like in, a, in layers. So instead of, you know, you're kind of, you're layering on top of each other, but it's kind of like multi-tracking. So what we, what we did was go into the, we had to build a spaceship. Well, how the fuck are we gonna build a spaceship? I was scratching my head. I was like, God, this sounds like a lot of work. Um, you were so mad at us. We took all of our gear, just like funky looking gear, rack mounted TVs and tape machines and just like all the crazy shit we had laying around. And we put them on these shelves and we just greened everything out. And we got a bunch of Kelly Green fabric from Joann's and frog tape. And we filmed our background. And then we used that background and put it on a green screen behind, you know, the interior of our spaceship. It's basically just like a Fostex, you know, mixer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sitting on top of a table, a couple lines and stuff. And we, do, we you just chroma key everything in. And we worked, at, we worked a couple different layers, but it was, it was, it, it really came out fantastic. And we did a lot of animation for, you know, the abduction sequence that, you know, I had to hand draw all myself, which was really cool. The, uh, the models that we used in there, there's kind of a, a cop chase scene um with a uh, a little clay ufo that we that we built and had to paint and, you know and put on fishing wire and dangle it in front of uh 
Microsoft, you know, XP screensaver, so you get the stars moving, and you know, you have like a little cop car chasing it. And so that that that, that part that part was cool. It was just a lot of like really hands-on, meticulous projects, and we were able to pull it off in about a week. And then Tom had to leave; he was doing a job in Maine, going out onto a navy vessel to try and count all the fish in the ocean. He works for the uh, Department of the Interior, and so he was going out on his, his, his Navy job. And so he had about a week in a hotel, and he edited the whole video and, and sent it to us. And I think it really did the track justice. Because the whole, the whole nature of this track in particular was us collaborating with, you know, some of our most talented friends. And we, we uh, you know, Van, Vance kind of produced and recorded and mixed the track. You know, Gabby and I did what we do all the time. We're always fiercely DIY. That was, uh, between us and Vance, that was a very beautiful creative collaboration. And then also going and um, having that type of hands-on collaboration experience, you know, making a music video that way was was really rewarding too. Because I mean, everything was shot on, you know, Omni movies, going into, you know, MX, MX-15 to this and to that. And it's like, you know, it's all this analog hardware, you know, it's so much wiring, man. It's just, <laughs> it's insane. Patch bay. Our man. house is just full of It's wires. just wires, man. And, but it's, it's the, that's the process that's, you know, fun for us. It's like, oh, we gotta figure it out, you know? We gotta like, oh, this and that, what, what's gonna happen there? And you just, you end up discovering things when you're naive about, you know, old mediums that maybe nobody's that stumbled upon before. Cause there's a myriad of ways that you can fuck with video signal. You can run audio through video input. You can run, you know, video through the audio input and, you know, you can fuck with magnets and you know, there's all sorts of things that you can do to, to really screw with stuff and, you know. Magnets. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Circuit bending, like all all that stuff, <laughs> and we're not the first people to do that type of stuff. But it's no. we've been found in so much fun, and we're taking that approach to recording now. We've been doing a lot more stuff on tape, and it's you know get, get, getting real far out in the video realm. It's like oh, let's take it back to music, and you know, how can we fuck with our audio signal in ways that you know we haven't thought of doing yet. So it's been a really experimental time, and the whole process of making that tune was was, was fucking beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. I, 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 I love second how all that. I watch it on you, or I mean on Spotify, and it gives you that visual. That's from the music video. That y'all put together. I know, yeah, but like, I like how it plays on Spotify. Oh, the, the thing. Up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a new feature on Spotify, which I think is really yeah, cool. Yeah, anybody can do it. All tunes, kind of, uh, you, if you, you can do that too. All our songs, anyway, we have, um, you can do up to two to eight second clip. Mm -hmm. um, all you do is upload it. On your Spotify artist page. I'm guessing the rest is on YouTube. Not yet, Not it hasn't yet. been released yet. We'll show it to you tonight if you want to see it. Oh, but shit. So, yeah. It oh, comes okay. out on uh, the third or fourth. Third or fourth. Okay. I wouldn't put it out on the fourth. She's like, no one's going to want to watch that shit at a barbecue. And it's like, that's kind of true. Maybe but... they won't. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Usually on the fourth of July, you want to like put something out that's like, yeah. I don't know. Everyone's well, blowing up in fireworks or some shit. You want to play some music. You know, I want to party. Well, then maybe hard, he's right. You know, eh, fuck it. On the fourth of July. You know, after the fireworks are done, you got to... Like, all right, now what, how are we going to climax from that? Well, people, honestly, maybe they just want to smoke yeah. a blunt and listen to the song and shit. Yeah, out. yeah, like exa it. or, yeah. Or just get going. Yeah, <laughs> or they're like, now it's time to skinny dip. It's a, sk it's a skinny dip yeah. tune, yeah. man. It it's is. It's a skinny dip and tune. It also reminds me kind of of like Dude, the summer party. skinny dip and tune. That's what people I need so. right now. That's kind of, you know, um, it's weird, all the music we've been writing lately has kind of been more like dancey and funky. Yes, it's not it's got like a different as, vibe to it's it. not as rocky these days. Yeah, and it's still, it's still got a heavy thump to it. Is cause it fast? Is it faster? Faster. It, some of it's still fast paced, but you know, some of it. Not, well, I mean, faster than what y'all were playing. Mm, break the law, kind of. Last question. <laughs> yes. What are the, some of the biggest things y'all learn from being in band? Oh. <laughs> wow, that's a big one. Well, uh, in this band, I've learned that when I don't have a good idea, he does. When he doesn't have a good idea, I do. And that if we don't like each other's idea, we can say it to our face and neither of us gets hurt because we don't care about our feelings. We care about the music and the overall project and that's always most important. So, yeah. You, you're wasting your time being in a band if you can't be a bitch to your band and be like, that idea sucks. Or you sound like shit and you need to practice. Yeah, you're out of tune. You'd be tune. nicer than that, obviously. Yeah, but you, but you, ha you can't, you, sometimes you've got to be you gotta run, get out of straight. I tell him when he's out of tune, he tells me when I don't play the right fucking feel or the right, you know, the rhythm or whatever. Jeff, too, we all tell each other and like oh, some people get so bad hurt over it. Oh my God. Yeah. Bobby will be honest. But, but be accountable. You got to be... <laughs> 
accountable. She keeps me accountable, dude. She keeps I think mean, you said accountable. Accountable. Uh, uh. You gotta be accountable about being, <laughs> about being accountable. Oh yeah, favorite book, Robinson Crusoe. Dude, that's my fucking favorite oh, book. No, it's not. No, yes, it is. I was gonna say that. I was like, I can't wait till they ask me what mine is. So I was gonna say Robinson Crusoe, dude. dude. You're the only person I know that's even fucking read dude. that. I, great Illustrated Classics. Did you ever that's, read this? The, 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 the versions. I when you're, yeah, I when you're all of them. Also, the Count of Monte Cristo. Yes, Count of yeah, Monte Cristo. The great one. Yes, I was gonna like all the Jules Verne books. Twenty thousand uh, Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, I've read Treasure I've read. Island. Oh yeah. Uh, Treasure Island. Robin Hood. Uh, what was the one? Um, I really like Count of Monte Cristo. Yeah, that one stuck Monte in my head. I thought Dude. about Alcatraz. I named my band. In 2013, 2014, we were called Jacopo. We were three piece. That's and we were like progressive rock, psychedelic progressive rock. And I named the band Jacopo after the knife fighter in the in Count of Monte Cristo. That's sick, dude. I remember him. Um, but I spelled it Y A K A P O because no one would ever know it was Y A K A P O instead of J A C A P O. I really like the way you spelled it. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. That's oh, a yeah. deep cut, that's, that's man. That's really dope. That's why I was like, I was like, I was, when you were like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude. Dude, Friday and like when he makes goat cheese. And yeah. He makes, when he has would, all the, the, the. I, I read the, the book too. Yeah. He cuts right. down the tree to make the um the, the boat and it's too big. He can't move it. Mm -hmm. And he has to start all over again. He worked for like eight months on the thing. Mm -hmm. King Solomon's Minds was a big one for me too. Oh, okay, I haven't read that. That was a that's a very cool book, man. Um, man, that's that's a throwback, dude. Cool. Did you ever see the Pierce Brosnan rendition of Robinson Crusoe? Was that the TV show or the movie? Movie. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, it was so short and it was not you know, like it didn't go into depth with anything that we could. Yeah, you know, it just turns it into a whole drama piece, man. I mean, it would be kind of hard to make a movie about it because, like, for the first it should, it 20 be years... A show, dude. Robinson Crusoe? Yeah. He was on that island for 27 years, right? Each episode could be about different... 27 years? That's, like, my fucking... There's enough life. stories in there, though, for a TV show. That's the thing, because if you did that, I mean, it's like The Mandalorian or something. You know, you could do it kind of like... Exactly. You don't need dialogue. Exactly. You just need a good soundtrack. Exactly. Like, you don't need Friday until, I think, season three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just silent for the first three seasons. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just kind of talks to himself and stuff. Well, yeah. dude. Anyways, that should be like a book segment or some shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm about. Biggest thing that I've learned from from this band is to uh, to just to trust the music. Will it doesn't matter who you're in in a room working with. If everyone's got an open heart and an open mind, then. The idea will present itself because the ideas don't come from me or you or, or she or them or whatever. It's like the ideas don't come from within; they come through you. And like the you know, if you're having a musical impulse in that moment, or somebody's like, "Oh, I have an idea," like go with it. Fo just follow all the ideas, and you'll figure out where the they're like little highways, and you just gotta know what exit they get off of or something. Mm -hmm. But if if you're in a room, the the the, the idea presents itself like. More often than not, like it's 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 not about you. It's 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 about you know where's the fucking idea come from, man? It's just it's just music, man. Just Lifting up the bigger image, the yeah. bigger thing. Yeah, man. I mean, shit. I mean, I, I might not write a song for like two weeks, and she's over here churning them out or something, and it's like it's that's not a representation of you know my creativity is or or, or uh, you know exemplifying her creativity it's it's more like you know she just susceptible to music at that point in time you know it all comes and flows it's like a wave mm -hmm. and it's you like, have to be open to it too if you're on the creative wave you know and you're just like oh on this creative high you just can't make shit you know eventually the, the, the wave breaks and crashes and you're down the bottom of the waveform and that's when you gotta pick up all the pieces and do all the work and finish everything all the non-creative parts that you know let your creativity ride you know right yeah, so we do the on the from Toy Story Two. You never brush art. What part of Toy Story Two is that? I haven't seen it in a while. When he's painting Woody, the old man with all the little paint brushes, and he's like editing Woody or okay. whatever, and mm -hmm. like paints over his Andy on his boot. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking. About. And the guy's like, "How long is this gonna take?" And he's like, "You never brush art." <laughs> And I was like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, unless you're like, the, you know, the fucking equals. You're like, okay, does it really take a year and a half to, like, you know, $2 million to make a record? Does it? 
No. Mm. I love I love the Eagles, don't get me wrong, but I'm just no, no, kind of poses like the question. That's an extreme situation. Uh, our website's a lot of fun. I spent a lot of quarantine as making it, our website as crazy. It's you do that shit. If you just click on stuff, it'll just take you to weird places. It's just, everything is kind of a link. Well, <laughs> great having you on. Dude, yeah. this is fun. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's been a great time. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, the rest of the night, I'm just gonna I'd be asking you questions because I mean, yes. you, you've done fucking know everything about me now, man. Yeah, I haven't talked to anyone like yes. this before. <laughs> and you're, you're like more interesting. <laughs> no way. All right, well. Thank you all for being on it. Thanks, dude. Thanks.